What's up, Planeswalkers? It's your boy, AK Dog, And today we're uh, in a brawl with a uh, Rakdos, the Showstopper, as our commander. So Rakdos is a super fun card. Uh, happy to showcase this before it rotates here, part of the uh, uh, Guild of Ravnica block. It's going to be rotating here uh, next month in September. Uh, super powerful card. Seemed like maybe when it was, uh, first came out, might, it might actually do a little something, but, you know, 6 mana, 6-6, six, six, just a little bit too slow. And uh, th just this pseudo board wipe thing um it's just so so random but uh it's not really something you can count on if like if it was like guaranteed destroyed everything that wasn't a demon devil or imp this probably would have seen some play um but the fact that it's just a flip a coin to destroy something that isn't and in, in particular we also haven't had a whole lot of demon devil or imp support in standard uh there's pretty decent uh demons uh you know like nightmare shepherd uh doom whisper but that's another card that hasn't really seen a whole lot of play but nightmare shepherd is a fantastic one uh, as well, but as far as like the devils or imps, those have been pretty uh, uh, whippy, to be honest, from our time in standard. But it doesn't mean we can have fun with it. Rack those, super sweet card. Um, uh, I've had some fun playing Brawl uh, with this, even like in standard and things like that. And um, there's definitely times when it comes down and it just does nothing, and you're just like, oh, really? But then there's times when it comes down and it wipes out like your your opponent's board, and you're just like, it's the best, it's just like the best feeling. Uh, so yeah, we're going to run it here in Brawl this time. And uh, so just to kind of review if you're not familiar, 6 mana 6-6 six, six, flying trample. When Rakdos enters, you flip a coin for each creature that isn't a demon, devil, or imp, and destroy each creature whose coin comes up tails. Obviously, we're on Arena, so I'm just going to do it for you. So you just see a bunch of little kind of flipping things, similar to like Mirror of the March, something like that. And um, and then uh, some creatures will uh, die, and some creatures will still be there. And so that way you'll, you'll know which ones are which. Um, so... Obviously, we're playing all, all the good ones that do fit in with this theme, but, uh, you know, Rakdos Core, we still have lots of good value uh, creatures as well. So we're going to jump into that and uh, see what we got. And nice thing about Rakdos and a Brawl list is that it is repeatable. It's six mana, which is a little bit steep, but we're also kind of kind of more in the mid to late game uh, with this style of deck as well, lots of removal and things like that. So being able to cast a potentially, you know, eight mana or even ten in certain situations shouldn't be that, um, shouldn't be that hard to uh, pull off. Uh, just kind of drag out the game and uh, kind of hit all your land drops. And we've got, you know, some mana rocks and things like that to kind of help us out as well. To potentially cast it multiple times. And uh, something like Kai's Ghost Form, of course, works really well for that. You can put this on your Rakdos. So even if they do uh, kill it or exile it, then you can just have it come back on the battlefield. And it'll just trigger its ETB effect all over again. And maybe it'll hit the the uh, magical board wipe uh, then. Uh, Pilfering Imp is our uh, one mana, one one imp. Uh, it's got flying, of course. And whenever... Uh, you can pay two to sacrifice it on your turn to make your opponent reveal their hand, and you can choose an online card from it. So it's like a it's like a dress, but it's like a one one flyer, and you have to pay two mana to actually get that ability. And like all, all, like always with these abilities, you have to do this uh, on your turn. So you can only do this at sorcery speed. If you actually do this on your opponent's turn, it could actually be this might might actually be playable. But in fact, it's two mana to activate it, and you have to tap it and do it at sorcery speed. It means you can't like attack with it and then. And then, uh, you know, activate its ability to sacrifice it. You have to either choose your attack or sacrifice it. Um, so if you get this on turn one, obviously you probably just want to maybe uh, just start attacking in. Kind of depends on what you're up against. If you feel like you're up against somebody who's going to have lots of uh, uh, cards you want to get rid of, Planeswalkers or uh, Enchantments, other permanents are going to be a little bit hard for you to deal with. Uh, you might want to just fire that off as soon as you can, maybe get one or two attacks in. But... Um, Otherwise, you don't mind just having this as a one flyer and just having it down as like a blocker is perfectly fine as well if you're against a more aggressive matchup. And uh, Eliminate also helps with those aggressive matchups being able to destroy creatures or planes or mana three or less. Uh, Fettered Imp is actually a pretty reasonable imp, I think, especially in the, something like a brawl. It's a two mana one two with flying, which is, you know, pretty pretty whatever. But then you can pay black to give a death touch in, until end of turn, which is pretty reasonable. So it's a nice, uh, uh, basically, removal spell. Um, also got a Heartless Act here for some more removal, uh, or you can just remove three counters from a target creature if you're uh, up against, uh, you know, like a, uh, anything that evolves around counters, you know, Riot with uh, Gruel and things like that. Uh, we also got Lava Coil for some early uh, removal, and the Exile can be pretty clutch as well. Shredded in Sails, kind of a flex card here, you know, destroy an artifact. Uh, we don't necessarily want our opponent to uh, ramp or have the fixing for their mana, so we don't hit their... Mana rocks there, Arcane, Signet, Chromatic Lantern, or whatever they're using. And being able to do 4 damage to a creature with flying is pretty reasonable as well, since we have a lot of flyers here. Uh, since, you know, demons, devils, uh, actually not devils so much, but demons and imps tend to have um, flying. So we can kind of keep the airs, uh, keep the air, the skies 
clear for our demons and uh, whatnot to attack in through the air. And if those uh, cards aren't relevant or just not relevant to the board state, we can just cycle it away for two mana. So it's never never a dead card. We've got two bolts rager here. It's a two mana one two. When it dies, deals one damage to any target. So just kind of a really bad, expensive uh, uh, Tibalt uh, Planeswalker token, basically. However, um, it does have exactly the ability where you pay achievement to give it plus two, plus zero on plan of turn. So, you know, if you do have your Tibalt's Rager down and your uh, Rakdos comes down and it does wipe your opponent's board, uh, then, you know, once you have mana open, you can now activate this and now you can swing for, uh, what, you'd have at least six mana at that point, so you can hit, hit this for an additional six damage, so seven damage out of nowhere, plus the Rakdos swinging in the air, so you can close out some games pretty quickly in the right situation. So it's kind of one of those cards that's not really good, but in certain situations it can be like those niche situations, it could be pretty clutch. And Croxa, you know, we're pretty uh, pretty more into the kind of the control and getting to the late game, so making your opponent discard, having this come back down, escaping all your uh, removal spells out of your graveyard, and having this come back down as a 6-6 six, that six, stays on the battlefield and makes your opponent discard every time it attacks. Um, it's pretty fantastic, going to help you out uh, in the late game pretty well. And Arcane Signet gives us some ramp and fixing. Uh, we also got the Demonic Embrace, since it makes one of our creatures a demon. Um, since we are running some other kind of utility creatures in here as well. So like I said, there's just not really enough, uh, you know, Demon Devil Imp support. Well, giving one of those creatures make uh, Demonic Embrace and making a Demon means it's not going to die to Rakdos entering the battlefield. And then just a good card all around. Being able to give one of your creatures plus three, plus one flying. And if they kill that creature or whatever, uh, you can just uh, discard something and uh, pay through life to get Demonic Embrace uh, cast out of your graveyard. So just a nice all around play there. And Grim Dancer here, it's a Nightmare 3 mana 3 3, but it comes down with a Menace, Death Touch, or Lifelink. So, depending on the situation, you're probably just going to be choosing Death Touch and uh, Lifelink, maybe. Or if you're feeling more aggressive, you might go for the Menace. But um, certainly, Death Touch and Lifelink is going to keep your opponent's uh, uh, creatures at bay while you're kind of getting set up into your late game with your uh, Rakdos and things like that. And if it dies to a Rakdos entering the battlefield, that's fine. It's probably, probably done its job at that point. But um, it is a flip of the coin, so maybe it'll live, and you can just attack in with, you know, a Menace uh, Death Touch or a Menace Lifeling creature. So it could be pretty sweet. Murder Slider, obviously just a good card all around. Gives us that removal we need. Same thing here, Obnix Cruelty. Kind of underrated um, removal spell. That is a little bit expensive here at 3 mana, but just the fact that there's a single black makes it very splashable. Um, and then the Exile effect is pretty powerful. Minus 5, minus 5. It hits, like, most creatures, certainly, uh, in standard. So I think it's pretty pretty reasonable uh, removal spell. And Freakers Libation gives us some Sacrifice effect, which isn't going to be good against decks that have a lot of creatures. Uh, you know, like a Reese uh, deck or something like that has lots of uh, uh, tokens and things like that. Going to be able to handle this pretty well. But uh, mostly it's here for the enchantment, making your opponent sacrifice an enchantment. Um, since Rakdos goes, we don't have any other way to deal with that. So just having one way to deal with that at least uh, can be pretty clutch. Soul Seer here, been able to hit creatures or Planeswalkers and make them lose Indestructible. Especially in a Brawl format, this card is really, really... Amazing, you know, a lot of people like their Heliods and the Clothis and things like that. Uh, we can always kind of slow them down and um, and uh, kill their creature. And they'll get Planeswalkers as well. It's just the flexibility on this card is fantastic. And uh, Tibalt here, we don't want our opponents to gain life. Uh, you know, a lot of people like those mono white uh, life gain type commanders and decks and things like that. So, shouldn't have your opponent from gaining life. Making Devils, of course, is also pretty uh, thematic as well. And it's just a one on creature that can kind of help uh, block and hold down the fort while you're getting to your late game. Bedevil, just a nice utility card. We're new colors, so we don't mind running something like Bedevil with the intense double black and uh, red mana cost. And the able to hit creatures, artifacts, or planeswalkers. Having that flexibility in Brawl is fantastic. It took seems to give us some additional exile removal for creatures and planeswalkers. And the surveil effect is a very nice bonus. Erebus, uh, we have lots of, you know, black in our devotion. You know, we have the Grim Dancer with double black. We have the Demonic Embrace, which is double black. And things like that. So certainly, uh, even though we're... Uh, kind of mixing creatures with uh, a lot of removal spells. Uh, we should still be able to get to 5 Devotion uh, pretty reasonably. Uh, not all the time, obviously, but we'd have lots of lots, lots of black um, in our uh, Devotion with our permanents here. Um, so getting to 5 it certainly seems uh, reasonable, even though even with all their motion. Even with all the removal we're running, is what I'm trying to say. And whenever a creature you control does die, we get to pay two life and, and uh, draw a card. So, you know, if Rakdos comes down and kills a couple of our creatures that weren't uh, the appropriate creature types, well, we can just pay the life and draw a couple cards and help us kind of dig for some more removal and help us close out games or whatever we need. Um, and probably not going to be using the sacrifice another creature to give a target creature minus two, minus one. I don't think I've ever seen anybody else do that uh, in my life, but maybe, I guess. Um, 
We do have the Nightmare Shepherd here, of course, what I alluded to earlier. It's a 4 mana 4 4 uh, demon. And whenever non token creature you control dies, you can exile it. And if we do, we can create a topi copy of that creature, except it's a 1 1. So, pretty fantastic card here. Uh, we're, not, I don't know, we're obviously not running a lot of creatures, so it might not get too much value out of that. But we do have a couple creatures with the, you know, the Grim Dancer and things like that, so maybe. Uh, Price of Fame, I love this in Brawl. I think it's kind of an auto clued. Being able to hit. Um, uh, legendary creatures for just uh, two mana instant speed is pretty fantastic. You know, we're in Brawl, so you, odds are your opponent could be running uh, Legendary Creature as their commander, or just going to have Legendary Creatures in their list, surely. So, oftentimes, it's going to be able to just come down as a two mana kill spell. And Surveil, Surveil 2 is pretty uh, pretty sweet as well. Nice little bonus. Rankle, just a nice value card here. Four mana, 3-3, three, three, Flying Haste. Uh, you know, forcing opponent to discard. Um, well, both players discard, but... Um, when you know you have something that you want to discard a land or if you're empty-handed uh, being able to draw cards can certainly be relevant as well nice little card draw engine here and making your opponent sacrifice a creature could be pretty fantastic you know we have the uh, those cheap one and two mat imps we have the tibalt uh, one one tokens things like that we don't necessarily mind uh, uh exiling or soon sacrificing and we get some value off of wrinkle that way and just a nice kind of a card all around spawn of mayhem it's a four mana four four demon just to have spectacle uh three um uh, which isn't we're not too aggressive, so don't know how often we actually get the get to play it for the spectral cost. But you know we do have some decent creatures, so depending on where our opponent is up to, we might be able to, uh, you know, get the um, the Grim Dancer in for menace and uh, hit for three and uh, trigger spectral and things like that. And uh, being able to pressure your opponent's life total by uh, dealing two damage to each player on your upkeep could be pretty pretty helpful. And then this thing grows when your opponent when your life uh, gets gets pretty low, and we're you know pretty pretty heavy into the act and the in that Rakdos theme where we don't necessarily care about life, our life total, we just want to kill our opponent. Uh, one of the uh, Crowan Wars, be able to gain control of a creature for uh, as long as it remains on the battlefield, and then uh, making your opponent attack into you, and then uh, each creature deals damage to itself equal to its power, each tap creature, so it's kind of a one-sided board wipe. And obviously we have the Rankle, and we have the uh, Erebos, so we do have a couple of sacrifice uh, outlets to uh, you know, take advantage of this Crow and Ward to get some real value off of that by taking something from theirs and then sacrificing it to Rankle or Erebos or whatever. So that's pretty sweet. Uh, we also have uh, Solemn Simulacrum. Uh, kind of helps us uh, dig for land so we can kind of uh, guarantee that we uh, curve out. And then when it dies, we uh, draw a card. And we don't care if it dies to, to Rakdos. We don't care if it dies by chump blocking a bigger creature. Um, it just, it's, it's just done its job. And that's exactly what we needed to do. Uh, we also have a Cavalier of Night here, perfect fodder for the Solemn Simulacrum. Uh, we can also sacrifice whatever we took from the uh, Crowan War to uh, kill something on our opponent's side. And then uh, when it dies, we get one of our 1, 2, or 3 drops back. You know, we have some pretty reasonable creatures um, that we don't mind necessarily getting back with us. And uh, having the 4 5 life linking body is uh, really amazing against those aggro matchups. Uh, Doom Whisperer is uh, just a powerful 5 mana 6 6 flying trample, pay 2 life, and surveil 2. Just a lot to like about this card. Just hasn't really seen a whole lot of play in standard. It seemed like it saw some play early on, but ever since then it's kind of just been overshadowed um, as just being too slow or too expensive, or there's just been better stuff uh, maybe to, to play instead of this. But I love it. It's a, it's a really, really powerful card, and it obviously it fits in what we're trying to do as a demon. Uh, Bantu here gives us uh, some card draw, in, card draw here. 5-6 uh, Menace. This is a uh, zombie god, so it's not uh, one of the creature types we're necessarily looking for. But, uh, you know, even if we do lose it to a, to a Rakdos ETB, well, we can just have it uh, come back into our library through from the top. Uh, we can also you know, use it to sacrifice something we stole off the Crowan War or whatever and uh, draw a card off of that. If we're flooding out pretty hard in the, and we draw this in the late game, we can sacrifice some lands to uh, draw some fresh cards and kind of dig for some more uh, creatures or removal, whatever it is we need. And just a 5-6 menace creature is pretty, pretty reasonable as well. Rise from the Grave here. Uh, it says M19, but this is actually part of a, I don't know, like a starter deck or, or something, so it is technically legal in uh, in uh, Brawl. And uh, this is a 5 mana sorcery. We can put a creature, a creature card from the graveyard onto the battlefield under your control, and it's a zombie to shoot other uh, colors and types. So I don't really care about that too much, but being able to hit uh, either, either player's graveyard to get a creature back out is pretty fantastic. You know, if we got super lucky and we killed their best thing with the uh, Rakdos entering the battlefield, uh, we can follow that up and rise from the grave and get it back on our side. So that's pretty fun. And we'll also get back one of our creatures, uh, you know, our Doom Whisper, Cavalier, get an additional trigger there, and uh, Rankle, things like that. So lots of like the versatility here on Rise from the Grave. Liliana Dreadhorde General and Chandra Awake Inferno are our top end here. Just super powerful Planeswalkers. Liliana making zombie tokens. 
Um, if any of our creatures die, you know, if we make some zombies, and then we play Rakdos, and those zombie tokens die, we'll get to draw some cards, so we don't really care too much about that. And they're just free tokens off of Liliana anyway. Um, we can also minus four to uh, get with some creatures on our opponent's side by making each player sacrifice two creatures. So it just fits in with our removals, uh, as does uh, Chandra here as well, which works well against anybody who might be holding up a counter spell, as uh, she cannot be countered. We can give our uh, opponent an emblem with our plus two, we can minus three as kind of a mini board wipe. Um, and we can minus X to do X damage to a creature or a planeswalker, and then have it go do exile instead. So that's pretty fantastic. And then there's our flex kind of uh, cards here. We've got Erebos's Intervention and Perforos's Intervention. I uh, just really like these uh, modal cards in uh, like a singleton environment. Uh, then it'll hit your opponent's graveyard or kill something and gain life. So it's good against anything that's uh, really aggressive by killing a creature or gaining some life uh, on top of that. Or uh, kind of uh, any slower any slower deck that uh, might, might want to get some advantage by using uh, their graveyard. Uh, jumpstart, escape, uh, anything like that. We can just uh, exile some stuff and make it so that our opponent can't uh, have access to those. Uh, Purple's Intervention be able to hit uh, creatures or planeswalkers is pretty fantastic. Or just making a big old uh, chapel haste creature to uh, help you potentially close out some games. Alright, mana base here. I believe we're on 25. Yep, 25 lands. <clears throat> so we've got the one Castle Octoane, Nine Swamp, Seven Mountain, Blood Crypt, Bloodfill Caves, Rakdos, Gilgate, Temple of Malice. We've got all the dual lands here. Uh, Blast Zone gives us some additional removal, especially like a go wide kind of a strategy. Helps us out pretty good. Bonders Enclave, we have some you know big powerful creatures. So if we're, if we're uh, run out empty and we have one of our big creatures down, but we can't really attack into it because we need to preserve our life total, we can just pay three without losing life to say it like we would with like Castle Lockdown and just draw cards by having a big creature out. Uh, we also have Command Tower, of course, is a must for a uh, multicolored deck and Fabled Passage as well. All right, that's the deck. We'll jump into some matches. Let's see. Ya. All right, up against Kethis. Hmm. I mean, we could fed it imp, and if we find another black source, we can potentially spawn on three. We'd have an eliminate as well. So hopefully, we get some lands. And the only thing that's really missing is that Kai's ghost form was a swamp. I would love the sand. As it is, it's. Barely keepable, so we'll, we'll try. Rise from the grave. Uh, we'll just go ahead and get this imp down. So, Kethis means this uh, price of fame should be pretty powerful. Eliminate works as well. Uh, it's a land, but it's a tap land. I uh, probably don't want to turn for imp. I'll just get more lands, probably. Alright, we'll swing one. I'm on a 24 turn clock. And now if they just tap out for Kethis, we got the Price of Fame, we got Eliminate. I uh, probably just want to eliminate the Kethis if that's what they go for. Nope, oh, Azusa, so they're going to get the ramp on. Okay, Fable Passage. And Mobilize District, wow. How often do you have an Azusa with two more lands after you've already played three? That's pretty, uh, that's pretty amazing. Let's eliminate the uh, Zeusa. And they've already got their value, but let's get the creature off the board, I guess. Doom Whisper. I guess we'll tap out here and play our spawn. So that's kind of where the spawn can come into play against these kind of slower decks. And we were just looking for lands at this point. The opponent did ramp up pretty good thanks to that uh, Zeusa, basically acting like a Cultivate. But hopefully they just play Kazus and we can just kill it. Well, they give us a land. Actually, we will take that. Right. Pretty much leaning towards uh, black, so we'll grab a swamp. We're going to have two red sources out. We have a land, and we can just uh, Doom Whisper. They mobilize District, but that taps them out, so they don't actually get to do anything. That's hilarious. What they say? Reading the card explains the card. We can still there Azusa, but we don't have any value. We can uh, rise some grave our uh, spawn, but we'll just get this uh, Doom Whisper down. Right, so we can surveil any time, so I'll have to watch the uh, priority here, make sure we're not stalling out our opponent for no reason. We're at 25 life, so we can probably uh, surveil here with, uh, with confidence. Pulse the mirror, sure. So they can fight our imp. 
don't really care too much. I also would rather have it on defense to uh, hold up Death Touch, but so be it. So they get their three life back, back up to 25. So opponent saving Kethis for the last possible second here, it looks like. I mean, they got so many lands at this point that uh, even if we kill Kethis, they'll probably just be able to play it again. That'll be five. Maybe even that same turn. Wow, what do we want first here? Let's keep the land first, and we'll hold up Heartless Act as well. All right, so... Uh, you ready, ladies and gentlemen? Here comes Rakdos. Two targets on the board, two non-demons. I repeat, we have a Rakdos in the building. Rakdos has entered the building. And... Okay. Killed the token. Well, that's, um... Uh, Something. Yeah, we'll swing six. See if we can just uh, bully them in the air. Now we have Price of Fame, Heartless Act, and uh, Ghost Form all to uh, follow up. So we got this Rise from the Grave. If we do get the Toll Smear in their uh, graveyard. Okay, we got Vivian, so now they can play it. Um, play the creatures at instant speed. And Incubation Tree. Okay, so we can breathe pretty sure they don't have anything to play here and we hit them for 12 or we can swing at Vivian get her off the board obviously it represents value uh, the longer this game goes but if we hit them for 12 and put them down to 7 then maybe we just don't care you just play, you just play the Incubation Druid so you now. can't really uh, do anything there they're just trying to figure out which one to target with Vivian Alright, so we got Heartless Act coming. I think we want to stop and keep that still. Um, so let's Kai's Ghost Form U. So if they find a removal spell. And then we still have five men open. We can Price of Fame and Heartless Act. Uh, we could hit them for six. But I think I'd rather just. Um, we're going to have Trample. So if they give something uh, uh, reach, we don't really care too much. We're just trampling through. Opponent's down to 9, and now we're representing lethal next turn. Two removal spells in hand. So if they try to be cute and flash something in, we can just uh, kill it. So Vivian can minus, and we do not get to see what they uh, what they hit. Tear it down. Tear it's kind of a curious inclusion. Down. You have to run a lot of creatures with Vivian, but there's only so many legendaries, that, uh, I would imagine, to run with Kethis. So I'd imagine her whiff rate is reasonably high. I know I played Vivian and tried out some Vivian's in some different decks, and there were times when I uh, just didn't find any creatures with those three. You still get to choose one, but you just can't actually cast it because it's not a creature. So I'm not sure Vivian's like the most amazing thing to run. Uh, okay, so I have Okatra, which doesn't really do anything here. Uh, you could give it reach, but then we just price of fame or heartless act or both. And uh, yeah, obviously these Kethis decks uh, represent a lot of value the later the game goes, but we were to put them away uh, pretty handily. Okay, up against Rada. So this could be uh, could be a tough match. I mean, double swamp with the Bedevil and Obnix cruelty and Perforosis intervention. Um, yeah, I feel pretty good about all this removal. The Cavalier at turn 5 was a little slow, but that's fine. Skyway Sniper. Do we even care about that? We could intervention it, just to get a creature off the board. And we have... Uh, you know, it does have ways to deal with flyers, so I guess we'll kill that. We can sink man into it and fight uh, our flying creatures. It does have reach as well. Uh, still on a wayfinder, we don't really care about. <coughs> Another murder strider. I'll play you and pass the turn. Could have played the murder strider just as a creature, maybe. But I imagine against Rada, we just need lots and lots of removal. Okay, here it is, Drew. I guess we just uh, take the two here. 
I want to use my rule on the two two one Sohana Wayfinder. All right. Don't hate more removal, but I'd rather see more lands here since we have so much removal already in hand. So opponent up to five. Five mana with the Paradise Root. Cinder Vines. I think we get the Paradise Root off before we take damage from Cinder Vines. Could go after the Zertal, but I think the Druid kind of represents a little bit too much value for them. Alright, we're up to five. Uh, we don't have any creatures to sacrifice. We could, I mean, we could, hmm. We could Murderous Rider and then play that down to sacrifice. I think I'm actually going to do that. With this, with the Cinder Vines out and this board today, I think I'm just going to Murderous Rider. They're down to one card. They could play Rada here. Okay, they're going to tap and cycle land, trying to grow their Elvish Reclaimer. And get another red source. So they can't attack in. They're trying to grow this uh, Zerta. So they have one land in the graveyard now. Hmm. I think we'll just hold back here. Do we need Shredded Sails in this matchup? Probably cycle it. Alright, there goes Rada. <coughs> There's an Elvish Reclaimer. Get some more red sources here. They don't have good attacks. I think that's how they're gonna spend their turn. So we will, I guess we'll obnix the Urata. Just since Bedevil is a little more flexible. I right, play you. So we take some damage from the Cinder Vines, so be it. This is where we don't really have uh, enchantment interaction. Since with all of removal, it might be nice to have uh, uh, like a libation to deal with it, but we're uh, we're in a decent spot here. Obviously, they could find a pretty powerful threat at any time and kind of start swinging things in their favor. Hmm. So we found our six land. Lots of removal in hand. Let's uh, let's go for it. We got three uh, three good targets on our opponent's side. We could lose our murderous rider, but so be it. All right, what do we hit? Ooh, two. We got two creatures, and we do not lose any of ours. All right, get to Kraken there, Murderous Rider. Get to Kraken. All right, we still got the Bedevil plus Cavalier to deal with their Rada if they just go for that again. All right, just try to really tax their uh, mana base so they can't really uh, do a whole lot. Okay, Rada comes down, and they have two floating mana plus the Highlands. Nope. All right. Um, well, the murder shredder can't attack in, so let's. Um, it's not really doing a whole lot, so I think I'm fine. Let's well, sacrificing. And yeah, we just uh, had too much removal for the Rada. Sweet. All right, up against Nethroy, Apex of Death. Uh, this is awfully tempting with the Heartless Act the intervention. If we find a black source, we get the Grim Dancer on the three. We're going first though. Hmm. And we have the removal, and I imagine they're a little bit of a slower deck, so we'll try it. So we have the two early removal spells to kind of hold down the fort while we kind of uh, dig for what we need. Odds are we'll draw a uh, black mana source here soon. Ooh, look at that. Magic is easy. Draw what you want. All right, just need more lands here. Obviously, want to get up to six mana at some point. Opponent playing it pretty slow here. Uh, yeah, it's a Grim Dancer. What do we want here? Probably Death Touch. Mess. Well, I think is really too relevant. 
Uh, we intervention, we can embrace, or we can heartless acts. So we can intervention for. So we just tap out. Well, all we need is two, so. Yeah, it's fun. We had menace so we could attack anyway, but I don't want to give them any uh, creatures to mutate onto. Since I imagine uh, Nethroi wants to play all, all the mutation creatures in Abzan. So just keeping creatures off the board is probably better. Don't let them get that mutate value. And Dathla Crystal. That's uh, super slow. All right, we'll play... I guess we'll just go for Tibalt here. Let's shut down their lifelink. Uh, Nethroi has lifelink. I'm not sure if they're running anything else. Oh, if they were running Angel, then maybe they could be. A lot of people love them, so Majani's Pride Mate. Okay, Glowstone Recluse. And Cruel Celebrant. Alright, found a land. Do we embrace here? So let's make another token. So got some nice chump blockers. All right, let's attack and see if they uh, want to double block. Let's add Menace. If they do, then we Heartless Act. And they do not. All right, so we'll just hold up Heartless Act and see what they go for here. Heliod. It's a curious inclusion. It's going to be hard to get the White Devotion. See if they want to attack in here. Obviously, they don't like our uh, Tibalt. Alright, so we'll block the Celebrants. And Heartless Act the Glowstone. Uh, yeah, they deal one damage to us, but they don't get any life. The token dies and it kills their celebrant. And they have no board, and we have a decent board with Cavalier or Rakdos or anything we want to. Uh, we could rise from the grave their Angel Vitality. Is that worth it? I guess Nethroi means it's worth it. Keeping creatures out of their graveyard. Alright, so we got a 2 2 uh, flying zombie angel. That's that's about the most beautiful thing I've ever heard of. A zombie angel. Alright, point it down to 14. Two cards in hand, plus their commander. We're still looking for our sixth land to get Rakdos Town, but on empty board, not too amazing. Cavern Whisper is a 4 4 mess. Arcane Signet. So we play you, we have four mana open. That is tempting. But I think we just need to keep them off of mutations at all costs, so we will blow up this Cavern Whisperer. Sack our token, of course. We can sack the Angel, but I'm fine with keeping it on our side. Especially with the Cavalier Lifelinking creature down, that uh, represents a lot of value for the Angel. Or, oops, that was a, a misclick. I was trying to target the uh, Cavalier for the destruction, not the one damage. Oh well, so they should be at 13, but it does come back to bite us. I just got a little too too trigger happy there. That's fine. They're down to 9. They have hardly anything going on on their side. Probably just hold up a uh, Bedevil here. So next turn we can Signet. Um, and we still have 3 mana open to Bedevil. You have a Heliod, but you have nothing to give Lifelink to. And Orzhov Locket. Yeah, those are just not not really good cards. I mean, you're playing three colors, so I don't blame you. But let's see, we're representing four and three is seven, and two from the Angel is nine. Uh, they kind of almost have to attack here, maybe, just to gain some life. Nope. Um, I mean, 
mean, they're just dead no matter what we do here. We can bedevil their 1-1. One, one. We can demonic embrace our cavalier. Uh, we could rack those as well, but since some of our creatures uh, might die, definitely not worth it. So we'll go for the demonic embrace on the cavalier. That's pretty. Uh, that feels pretty good. All right. So I don't think get much uh, better showing than those uh, matches right there. What do we got? Some gold. Cool. All right, yeah, Rakdos, super sweet card. Um, like I said, now that we've seen a whole lot of play in standard, uh, having fun playing around with it before it rotates, and uh, definitely think it has a home in Brawl. Uh, obviously, lots of good uh, removal spells in um, Rakdos colors to kind of keep the board nice and clear while you get to your six mana, and then when it does come down, Rakdos can kind of uh, clean up. Uh, a lot of situations, obviously, had uh, did pretty well in that uh, Rada matchup, be able to kill two of the three creatures, I believe. Um, and then just some nice spicy cards with the Rise from the Grave um, and things like that. Uh, I didn't get to see the uh, Crow and War, but obviously we did see the, uh, the Cavalier and things like that. We could have potentially sacrificed the creature from that. Um, it was nice to see Rakdos get a couple hits, so that was pretty sweet. And um, yeah, even the Grim Dancer. Or it kind of looks like it's pretty pretty medium since we're not running a whole lot of creatures, but even that put in a lot of work, especially since we, you know, we have lots of that removal, so we're able to keep the board clear, put a menace counter on it, and um, even though they had a creature out, they weren't, our opponent just wasn't able to do anything in those situations. Um, and then Tibalt shooting on the life gain, so like, there's just a lot of decks that do have, if they're not, you know, a mono white life gain type of uh, strategy, they, you know, could be like a veto maybe, or uh, life, life gain is uh, somehow part of their strategy, so definitely... Doesn't, never, doesn't feel like Tibalt is a dead card, you know, making tokens that uh, obviously synergize what we're trying to do here as well. Um, yeah, super fun list. Not really too much I would uh, change. Feel pretty good about it. Obviously, Shredded Sails is a pretty medium card. I don't know if it really really belongs, but um, it is a nice flexible card. You know, artifacts, so it slows down your opponent's uh, ramp and uh, color fixing. Uh, you know, it's removable on flyers, which, you know, definitely could be a thing, and it cycles, so it's not... Uh, not totally worthless, but that's certainly something you could uh, take out. It's a card that I've kind of looked at in certain brawlers before. I kind of throw it in there when I'm doing my rough draft, and then I'll take it out a lot of times. But uh, made the cut this time, but yeah, it's definitely one you could uh, change out. And uh, otherwise, there's plenty of um, um, commons and uncommons. So I think it's pretty budget friendly, and all the rares that are in here are pretty pretty good cards you might want in your collection. Uh, anyway, uh, some of them do rotate, of course, like the Cavalier. Obviously, Rakdos rotates, so if you don't have Rakdos, then uh, this probably isn't the deck for you. Probably not worth crafting uh, a Mythic wild card on uh, Rakdos. But uh, if you do have one in your collection, definitely super fun to uh, build around and uh, play with. Uh, gotta love seeing those kind of uh, little little board wipes when uh, Rakdos comes down out of nowhere. So, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. And until next time, make sure you jank with uh, purpose.